All right, our next speaker is Jake Schreier. His talk title is Keyframed Anatomy, Developing Anatomical Digital Education Resources for Distance Learning, which is pretty timely. So here's Jake. I'd like to uh, express my appreciation for everybody joining the Zoom uh, conference. I have my email address and Twitter handle on the title side, my Twitter handle is on all of the slides. Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to thank everybody uh, who appears on this slide due to the rapid uh, nature of executing, conceptualizing, and delivering this project. It would be impossible to do without everybody here. By way of background, the subjects and competencies required a medical curricula increase. The time available for anatomy education has decreased. We can see this graphic by McBride and Drake, and it shows the four pillars of anatomy and the contact hours in each one decreasing over time. Uh, neuroanatomy is speculated as kind of plateauing out at a sweet spot, and one of the theories for that is that there is a trend in anatomy education to integrate the curriculum across uh, the disciplines. And this is done because students' perception of, of neuroanatomy is that it is significantly more difficult and complicated than other ones. And this leads us into a solution that may be able to be applied to other uh, pillars of anatomy, and that's uh, improving anatomy distance education. And this may alleviate the decrease in face time by having recorded lecture content being uh, remotely accessible at any time. Supplementary learning material can play a core role in encouraging hybrid course structures, and the social distance of being online may encourage participation of introverted students. Now, these are some of the positive benefits that Hall et al. Uh, identified in uh, hybrid courses. Uh, of course, there's varying opinions among graduate students for it, but we're going to look at uh, solutions right now. So the project had three goals. The first one was to develop several sample digital neuroanatomy resources, to integrate and deliver these resources via an online format, then survey the students about the resources afterwards. All the resources were delivered to students as part of my responsibilities as a student instructor for a neuroanatomy course in the Modern Human Anatomy program. And this came at an opportune time because of the campus closures uh, to do COVID, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, all of the courses were transitioned online. So this is a, uh, a perfect Petri dish, if you will. So the first resource I developed were using 3D models in, New York way, in a unique way. And uh, 3D models have the advantage that you can position them in any way that you want, render them into a static image, put them in a slide, or you, with PowerPoint, you can insert a 3D model directly into PowerPoint and dynamically update it. This frees the instructor from being limited to the image orientation of stock photos. Now here's an example of a 3D pipeline. Uh, uh, detailed pipeline uh, protocols are in the works, but in this case, I started with an open source program called 3D Slicer to segment a uh, brain model. I use a, a education license for a substance painter, which is a extreme extremely simple uh, so soft piece of software where you literally use your mouse to paint different colors on the geometry. Then I use the education edition of Maya to then render it into an image, which I then put into a lecture that I delivered. And here's a slide from that lecture. Here's the 3D model that I uh, created. And the advantage of this was that I could uh, color the exact areas I wanted to highlight of the model to look the exact to look exactly how I wanted it to, as opposed to searching through uh, Google image uh, results to find something that worked more or less. Another resource is animations. Simple animations can be included into slides to emphasize points, show relationships. Uh, this is valuable because a dynamic relationship shown through motion can be a very powerful education tool. Now, animations don't need to be fancy or complex to be effective. I made this animation about 20 minutes in Maya. It shows the relationship of air pressure over time. I use it to illustrate sound. Now, due to the isolation, I didn't have access to tuning forks. And so in about a half an hour, I made this little animation uh, showing how to do uh, rind tests. And I've included both of these in my presentation. Now, here's an example of a pipeline for an advanced animation that I did. I took histology slides, and I made models out of them in Photoshop an education license. I put those into Maya, organized them in uh, anatomic position. Then I then animated tubes showing fiber tracks and nuclei. And I moved a camera along to show the 
relationship I wanted. I then put them into Adobe After Effects where I adjusted the timing, made it look all pretty, did some voiceover, etc. Another type of resource are supplementary materials. These can be pre recorded videos uploaded for the students' benefits or a 3D models hosted on a website such as Sketchfab where you can annotate the models and they can be manipulated by the students. Here is my example of a pre recorded video. So, using MRI data, I flattened out a visual plane in Photoshop. Using Maya, I illustrated the uh, uh, fiber tracks moving through the brain. And then in After Effects, I annotated certain pieces of anatomy that I want to highlight. If we go over and look at Sketchfab right here, here's a 3D model, and I have areas of interest painted on. You can click an annotation, it has all my notes here. So I gave this to the students for self-study so they could look at the model in 3D space and review the notes on their own. Now let's take it a step further. Let's integrate these resources deeply into PowerPoint. And we can use apps such as uh, Poll Everywhere to facilitate audience interaction, even at distance. So here's an example. Here's a animation going from one histology slide to another. I'm asking the students a question about where different pieces of anatomy are. We go to Poll Everywhere, and they're dynamically answering the question with pins dropped on the image. I'll talk about which pins are in the correct spot, which are in the incorrect spot. Then we will go back to PowerPoint. I have annotated this image in PowerPoint. And then we can see the animation showing the spatial relationship of the structure that I was talking about. Now, um, due to the uh, rapid nature of this uh, project, our the survey is still pending comorb approval. However, uh, what we will be looking for is the impressions of students' resources and their comfort in participating in a digital environment. Limitations were primarily from the, the campus closures and uh, limited resources through the COVID-19 pandemic. So this study was purely investigational. Our future directions would include a robust comparative study between 2D representations of anatomy and 3D animations. I believe that developing robust and powerful distance learning tools is essential for the future of anatomy education and that medical animations allow the instructor to show exactly what they want and how they want. They are freed from relying on Google image search. And hybrid courses can be developed to ensure that students have access to high quality instruction both on and off campus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jake. Um, great presentation. We'll take any questions. We have uh, time here for just a few. Um, reminder, any questions you have, please submit them to the chat box um, and I will uh, ask them. Uh, I do have a question. Um, oh, but I'll, I'll take this one first. Let's see. Will students be able to annotate these 3D resources themselves? Um, if a student has uh, access to a 3D model, they can annotate and host the model on Sketchfab, for example. Or if they have an image of the model, they can annotate it uh, for their own self-study resources in, you know, they could even do it in PowerPoint or um, uh, After Effects, et cetera. Excellent. Um, we have one other question here. Did you have a lot of experience with the software you used prior to this project? It seems complicated to create for someone who's a uh, computer illiterate. It absolutely seems uh, very overwhelming, but I took a one semester uh, Maya animation class and um, that gave me a, kind of a, a foundation to work on. But with the After Effects uh, animations that I did, I I learned that program and created the entire animation in a week. And so it seems complicated, but every single step that I went through was very simple, which is why I'm uh, developing a, a, a detailed pipeline illustrating out how these things can be done. Um, and how about how much preparation time would you estimate it took to create an anima animation like the tracks example? The, uh, the, um, it took about, so if you see on the, the image, I have this uh, visual system tracks example. Uh, that took maybe three to four days of work and then another week of learning After Effects and annotating it. 
But if I were to do it again with another system, because I, I know the basics of what I want to do, I could accomplish the, the entire thing in less than a week. Excellent. Sounds like it gets easier with each time you do it. Absolutely. And I'd just like to say that all of the software that I used um, has free, is either open source or has free education uh, licenses or deeply reduced education licenses. And so it's very feasible for any instructor to gain access to any of this. Well, thank you so much, Jake. That's uh, all the time we have for questions.